Thank you all for coming to celebrate Ricky's life. We pulled pictures of Ricky's life that has special meaning to us. Family was Rick Ricky's number one priority. When you become a friend of Ricky, you become part of our family. Ricky was fortunate to have stayed close to his high school friends with all the good times and the bad. I told him I knew of some of their shenanigans in school, but didn't let on, and he was surprised and just laughed. He loved you guys. Ricky would organize a group of friends to go to a Penguins game in Phoenix every year, and of course, you had to wear one of his jerseys to show support for the team. His room is quite a shrine to the Penguins. Ricky's other passion was hunting. He was so proud when he got a turkey for Thanksgiving one year. Lucky I knew how to cook it. Although I did get some buckshot, he forgot to clean out. His first year was another story. He was so excited he got one, but didn't realize it was not good at cooking the meat. The backstrap was easy, and oh how we tried. And I think his best memories were camping and hanging out with Mike and Jeff. He always had a good story to tell each time he came home. Whether it was tramping through rain and mud or cold weather, he just loved it. One of Ricky's favorite stories was when he was driving to San Diego to live in 1983. We stopped at a restaurant in Roswell, New Mexico, and he was about three years old. Well, he saw some cowboys in a booth behind us and told them in no uncertain terms that his dad could beat them up. <laughs> his dad nearly lost it, and we tried laughing him off to these huge guys. Um, I think we drove further down the road to get away that night. So after living in San Diego for a few years, we decided to fly back to Pittsburgh to visit family. Upon arriving in Pittsburgh and driving to his grandmother's house, he was intent on looking out the window at the scenery. He then asked in a serious voice if Grandma lived in the jungle. No, I replied. Why? Because there's so many trees and it's so green here. And that was his first real memory of our trip to Pittsburgh. Here's a good memory. One year, his grandmother was feeding us spaghetti and meatballs for dinner on the trip. And both his sister and Ricky looked at me and said something was wrong with her meatballs. Mom, what did you use to make these meatballs? She laughed and said, yes. I looked at them both and said, deer meat. Well, his sister stopped eating, but Ricky tried one more and said, I can't. Both kids were leery with the food that trip. His Uncle John's uh, fireworks display was always a big hit and hoped there would be one each trip. We always came back from our visits with great memories. That was just a few memories. We want to thank the incredible team at Three Northwest for all your support and caring of our Ricky. When Ricky first started treatment, he had a little test on the doctors who came into his room. He would drop a few F-bombs and wait for a reaction. <laughs> Most of the doctors chose to ignore it, except one day when in comes Dr. Mayer. She gave it right back to him, and when she left the room, Ricky looked at me and said, he liked that doctor, she passed. <laughs> Ricky appreciated a little nurse and text that took care of him. I have to say that you they were all earthbound angels taking care of these special patients. A hop, skip, and jump down Campbell Avenue. The other angels are at the cancer center. Thank you for your special care. I think in the time spent there, we saw the show Laramie episodes at least four times each. We switched to the cooling channel, played Pokemon, oh, Harry Potter, and did some online shopping to pass the time. Your celebration of his first transplant anniversary touched him so much, he was still talking about it for two days. He couldn't believe that Laura and Lena apparent remembered he liked M&Ms. They bought him m and cookies for his anniversary. One Sunday before Ricky needed a walker, he was feeling low, so I let him drive this truck. What do you know, he batted me out to Lena on Monday. I thought she was going to faint over that, but he so enjoyed that little drive. Please know that all of your prayers, no bets and masses, gave us the strength these past two years. They were not in vain. We want to close with a quote from Mr. Rogers. The connections we make in the course of a life, maybe that's what heaven is. Thank you and God bless.
Anybody else like to come up and share a memory of Ricky with the folks that are here? I know it's a little hard to get up in front of a microphone, but we are going to be having a reception just through the double doors to your left here. Um, so if you do have a memory of the family, I'm sure would love to hear a story or something that might make them laugh of that you can remember about Ricky. Um, but this is going to conclude the services we're having today. We do have the reception through the double doors, so please join the family for some, some food and fellowship. Thank you. I didn't really prepare anything, so <laughs> I just want to say, uh, you know, there's a group of us that knew Richard really well. Um, I don't know, hung out since high school, had a lot of good times with Mike, Brian, Brent, Trent, group of us. Short can be so. It's kind of a good time to be out of Richard. 